Today I'm going to show you one fun fold, three different ways, and it's going to be a masculine fun fold. Let's get crafting. Because we're going to be doing a masculine card, I have taken out my PDF that I did with uh, my foolproof masculine cards uh, quite some time ago now, but it is a free PDF. I will put the link in the description box for you. And this is what I use for every single masculine card. And I don't know why we struggle with masculine cards, but most of us do. So I'm gonna choose my colors. I'm gonna choose one to three colors. I'm gonna choose a theme and I'm gonna choose a technique. Now I know for today, my technique is gonna be a fun fold. So that part I've got. Now my theme and my colors. My colors are gonna kinda of be, well, dictated by the paper that I am using. So let me bring in the paper. Now this is Ideology Backdrops Volume 3. And it's kind of the perfect size. And the reason I'm cheating with this one is I'm going to use, these are all double-sided, the paper as the focal point. And it's going to dictate my colors. Um, so I'm not going to do a whole lot of embellishing because I really want you to see what this paper has to offer as well as the spun fold. And it's super simple. So I want to be able to use both sides. That's kind of cool. I wouldn't want to do this necessarily because my fun fold is going to cut through it. That would be okay. I like that, but I don't like the other side. And I think I want the inside to be rather plain. That's what it's going to be. Okay. All right, so now I have to decide if I want my fun fold this way so I can put an embellishment on the back or if I want my fun fold. I think I'm going to make this the outside. So I'm going to cut down my printed cardstock to measure seven and a quarter by five and a half inches. I did not have enough of the printed cardstock, so I'm just using a coordinating piece of solid cardstock that I'm cutting down to four and a quarter inches by three and three quarters of an inch. Now scoring on the long side of cardstock, we're going to score the large piece at three inches and the smaller piece at half an inch. We're going to fold our cardstock on the score lines and use a bone folder to crease the edges. With the larger piece opened, we're going to go ahead and take that small square and we're going to attach it to the right side of the cardstock. So on the underside of that little piece, we're going to add glue. Now you can add any type of glue that you use. You could use liquid like I do. You could use a tape runner. I just want this to be really sturdy. And then I'm just going to go ahead and glue it down to the edge of the right side of the cardstock. That's it for this easy fun fold. You can have the flap under or over the top. You can have it portrait or landscape. The easiest way to decorate this is what I call the basic. I'm letting the paper do the work here. So for this printed cardstock, it's an invoice. And this is matching the outside, but I really like that green emblem. So I'm going to use that for my flap. I cut the emblem so that the picture is square, and I'm going to go ahead and adhere that to the flap. So going back to my sheet, the colors are dictated by the cardstock. So in this case, some vintage color browns, grays, and greens. Just remember, have fun with it. There's no right or wrong here. But for the basic version, we're gonna go with very simple embellishments. I'm going to be using the Christmas 2023 Layers and Paper Dolls set from Tim Holtz. Now really look in your stash. Don't let something that comes out for a specific season 
scare you away from taking a peek at it because a paper doll is literally a picture. And in this case, I really like this photo strip. Does it really have anything to do with Christmas? No. So I'm going to use it here and it fits perfectly. So a simple bead of some liquid glue here, I'm using Barely Arts Precision Craft Glue and down it goes and bam, the front of my card is done. While I encourage you to use what you have, I will list any products that I'm using that I can still find in the description box below, because I know some of you just wanna take a closer look to see what I'm using. Now uh, it's time to decorate the inside of my card and I wanna cover up the tab from the little fun fold here. So this is all just leftover from the same piece of cardstock, and I'm just trying to decide, do I want that lighter side or do I want the contrast with the darker green? And I think I go with the contrast from the darker green. I'm going to run a bead of liquid glue along the cardstock edge and go ahead and adhere my paper piece. Flip over the card after I've burnished it down and cut off any remaining cardstock. I found this cute little hand in the same packet as I did the photo strip. And this sentiment is part of my freebie sentiment download that I offered in my last video. Did you get it? If not, what are you waiting for? I'll post the link over in the description box so you can download it. But remember, it's only free for a limited time. So head on over there and get yours today. I needed to grunge up my sentiment a bit since it was too stark white and I'm using Distress Oxide in Vintage Photo. I didn't care that it was splotchy because I actually threw some water spots at it and dried it up with a paper towel off screen and you'll see that in the final product. I'm just going to go ahead and glue that down with my liquid glue somewhere around that uh, little line there. My hand is going to point to it. And this card is done. You can't get much more basic than letting the card, the cardstock, do the work for you. Referring back to my PDF on masculine cards, I've chosen neutrals with some green. My theme is rather industrial, and my technique was a fun fold card. Here's a look at our final masculine card that is a fun fold. This is the basic fun fold where I'm letting the pattern paper and few embellishments do the work for me. So I just wanted to pop in here and give y'all a little heads up because my schedule for a Friday night post may end up changing. I'm not 100% sure yet, but we shall see. As many of you know, if you've been around for a while, I retired from my career after nearly 40 years last March. And well, I'm really too young to retire. So I needed to return to work. And I'm starting a brand new position on Monday and I'm not sure how my posting schedule is gonna work. I am not leaving YouTube. I am not leaving YouTube. This is what I really want to do. I find great joy in it and I love being able to help you all. So um, keep the comments coming, but understand that I will be at work, so I won't be able to get to everything as quickly as I typically do, but never fear, I will get to your comments and I will answer them just like I always have and I will continue posting new content. Let's make a stepped up fun fold card next. For this version, I'm using the same fun fold and the same paper pack, just different pattern, along with some stepped up embellishments. To step this up further, I have inked each of the pieces of cardstock with vintage photo distress oxide. I've also added some junk drawer baseboard embellishments, which are three dimensional chipboard. They're a little heavier than paper. And um, I have also opted to use uh, that, that distinguished gentleman on the outside. He is from Portraits Paper Dolls by Tim Holtz. The other thing that I'm doing because the chipboard is heavier is I'm gonna leave the small flap app outward so that I can uh, hide the distinguished gentleman underneath. If you're finding value or enjoyment from my videos, please consider giving me a thumbs up and hitting the subscribe button. It's free to subscribe. You'll just be notified by YouTube on YouTube when I release a new video. 
help me try to reach that goal of 10,000 subscribers. I'd love to have you be a part of the Village Card and Craft community. And for my third fun fold, we're going to do an extreme fun fold where we're going to throw everything but the kitchen sink at it. For the third card, we're going to start with some embossing. And I'm going to refer to my for purchase item. Now this one is available for purchase. I will link this in the description box as well. Um, but this is a compilation of all 20 embossing folder techniques that I showcased in two previous videos. And uh, you guys love the videos, so I thought I would put out something for you that you could print out and keep at your fingertips. Now you can leave these whole, you could do them on regular paper and put them in a pocket protector like I did here, or you can cut them apart, laminate them, um, put a hole and use a ring binder on it. The sky's really the limit, but it's at your fingertips, so you can't forget what these techniques are. So. I showcase the technique, some information on how to perform the technique, as well as a full color photo of what that will look like. And I did that for all 20 of my uh, embossing folder techniques. And that's available to you for purchase. So today, I am going to be using the Sizzix 3D Texture Fades embossing folder. Now this one is called Wood Grain. And you see how it's got these deep lines? It looks actually like a piece of wood. So I thought that inking the raised side would be the best thing because I want to get ink into the bottom. So if you ink the top of the folder, it's going to depress that ink into the fade. So we're going to get ink into these parts. And then we're going to step it up even further. So let me show you what we're doing. Okay, so here I am using a cream color card base, and it's the exact same card base that we did. Seven and a quarter by five and a half, scored at three. And then this side, I actually did a little bit differently. Okay, and my custom flap is four and a quarter by three and three quarters, scored at one half inch. I have folded and used a bone folder and I have attached my little strip over here, my flap. Okay, that's for the card. I have also cut out a three by five and a half inch card for the front, and this time I'm not gonna leave a mat that I think, and a four and a quarter, no, three, seven, five, yeah. Three and three quarters by three and three quarters square card for this one. And this is what we're going to do in our folder. So I have to decide, here's the raised side, here's the flat side. So I'm gonna be inking this raised side. So I have chosen old paper, fossilized amber, and hickory smoke. And there's really no rhyme or reason to how I'm gonna put them down. I just, I want to get those knots in there, so I'm going to kind of go for this side. And, oops, after I dunk my hand into it. Let's do that. Because sometimes wood kind of looks green so all right so now if you're using a pattern paper that you're going to emboss you would want your pattern face down but in this case I am not going to do that however on this side I'm going to add a little spritz of water because I don't want it to crack I don't know if it's going to prevent it but we're going to try all right then through the embossing machine and I'll be right back I did not add a ton of ink, but I did find that I actually liked the other side better. So I'm going to redo this and I'm gonna add a lot more ink, but I'm gonna add it to the other side. And let's see how it turns out. I'm using the same piece of cardstock. I'm just adding more ink to the other side and I'm gonna slip the cardstock back into the groove where it originally embossed. 
3D embossing folders, you can typically do that with and you don't have to waste your card. Okay. So this one I like more, but there's still more we're gonna do to it. So it's certainly not done. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. Let me wipe this off on this side. I'm using the same three colors of ink added to the embossing folder. This time I'm just being heavier handed. I liked that more ink was in there. So uh, just keep going until I'm happy. I'm gonna go ahead and spritz the back of my cardstock, add it to my embossing folder and run it through my machine. So I'm using my little makeshift splat box here lined with a paper towel and I've put my two pieces. Let me turn a light on here, maybe a little bit better. Okay, so I'm going to use some Distress Mica Spray and Tarnished Brass for that kind of gold shimmer. Some Dilutions Black Marble Shimmer Spray. Some Distress Oxide uh, in Walnut Stain, maybe. And some Distress Oxide Spray in Crushed Olive. And I've just lined my little my little tray here with some paper towel and give that a little shakety shake. I'm gonna go ahead and spray that. Now, as soon as I spray, I do wipe off the nozzle. Try to keep them from clogging. And I just wanna give it some more depth. Now, here's my walnut stain. If you have anything with mica, the mica settles to the bottom. Now, this one is not mica. This is pigment at the bottom. So we want to make sure that that looks liquidy. And you can kind of shake like a bell. You can shake up and down to get that ball moving. But if you do that, understand that you may get some pressure buildup and it may seep out the nozzle. So um, I'm okay with it right now. And you see it's almost, yep, it's almost done. Okay, so let's get some of that. I want some of this black marble shimmer spray. Now, if you don't like the way that it's looking, you can just add some water and get those inks moving. Flip that around. I might give this some more black there, a little bit more water. Now I'm not using watercolor cardstock, so we'll see. This is just uh, the tarnished brass at this point. I'm gonna go back to my walnut. Now, even though it appears that I am really covering up what I just did with the embossing, it's not going to matter because you're still going to see it. Sometimes uh, what you're doing is not necessarily opaque, and it's also kind of hit and miss. Now, you see that edge there? That's going to look really nice because it's going to kind of look like moss. And then I'm going to go ahead and dry these with my heat gun. And I'll be right back. I'm super pleased with how these turned out and I'm gonna start working on the actual card base now. Now here's the base again, and this is what the two outside panels are going to look like. And I think it's going to be really stunning but I didn't like the inside, too plain. So I cut another piece of cardstock, seven and a quarter by five and a half, and I'm gonna go ahead and adhere that to the inside of my card base. I've also die cut some Sizzix Funky Insects from this die set, and um, we're gonna go ahead and color those up with some leftover ink residue from Sponge Daubers. I'm gonna speed this way up. I do utilize one sponge dauber 
her colors. So they are labeled and unless I can catch the colors, I can't really tell you. I know the green is mowed lawn. The other might be salty ocean or moon Rain lagoon. I'm not sure which, but I'm going to go ahead and hear their wings and move on to my dragonfly. The dragonfly, I'm doing some sort of blue and I know I'm finishing the top with weathered wood and black soot. With all my panels attached, it's time to decorate. For the inside of my card, I'm using Sizzix die set. This is called Funky Cactus. And I've cut out all the cactus and their accompanying flowers in various colors of green cardstock. And I just used some residual ink from those sponge daubers and inked up those before putting them together. So now I've just got to decide where I'm going to put these bad boys. And you notice that I also had a third insect. That third insect I did a long time ago for a different project and I didn't use it. So I certainly didn't get rid of it. I stuffed it back in with the die set and here's a perfect opportunity to use something and I didn't have to make anything extra. My cactus is now adhered and I'm gonna go ahead and add their respective flowers as long as I don't add them to myself first but I do use stamping blocks as paperweights and I also use a piece of well it's a sample of Corian countertop and I use that as a paperweight too so use what you've got now for my sentiments I am going to be using Picket Fence Studio this one is called Bugville and it is no longer available you can still find it on eBay and what have you but I'm going to go ahead and use my stamp platform and I flipped around my uh, my plate here. That's the beauty of the Stamparatus. Unfortunately, it is no longer sold here in the United States. I think it's been discontinued by stamping up completely. Um, but it, you can't get it here in the U.S. no matter what. Uh, my cactus is there and I am going to stamp on that black <laughs> on the blank piece of cardstock there. Because this stamp set has never been used, I'm using a glue eraser across the face of the silicone. Um, it doesn't do any harm whatsoever. What it does is it removes all the chemical gunk from the stamp when it was manufactured. So you're going to get a better, crisper image. Now, I didn't like the the B in the word but here. So I just took a little paper towel or washcloth and I'm going to go ahead and re-ink that stamp. I'm just using VersaFine Black Onyx inks and this one says not to bug you but happy birthday. I'm very gentle. I don't press really hard here but it gives a great impression and of course I'm going to go ahead and clean up my stamp before putting it away. Didn't want to use sequins for my masculine birthday card, so I took out three tiny little stamps from that same Picket Fence Studios Bugville stamp set and inked them up and added them as my embellishment. Now the finished product for my Extreme Fun Fold card is fantastic. I love how this one came out. All right, there you have it. Three ways to use one fun fold card from basic to stepped up to extreme. Which one was your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to check out the links in the description box for the free masculine card how-to PDF, as well as the sentiment PDF, and anything else that I can list that we used in today's video, I'll link down there, and I'll see you real soon.